Nice to see you, Richard. Nice to see you. Yeah, I've always wanted to meet you. I'm really an admirer of your tremendous talents. Well, and they're, thank you. they're so vast, you know. I mean, you're, all your directing and um, all of the different series you've done in the movies. Are you thrilled about this new series? It sounds like it's got elements that are wonderful. Well, yeah, but it's, it's, I don't know how I got involved in a series again because I said <laughs> that's the, the work is way too hard for me. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. First of all, my association with. Uh, with James Earl Jones. I'm really looking forward to that. We've worked together in the past and we, we have a, a wonderful working relationship and, and friendship that I think is going to, uh, you know, it's going to find its way into the show and I think that's the important thing. But it also gives me the opportunity for the first time in many, many years to really play a character that's, that's kind of loose. I play so many structured guys and guys that are kind of, you know, involved in authority uh, situations where there's, uh, where there's a kind of a, a lawyers and policemen and that sort of thing and, and military uh, figures and so this gives me an opportunity to kind of stretch out and have some fun. He said, James L. Jones said wonderful things about you when I talked with him yesterday. He's well, really, he, it sounds like you two have got a well, wonderful thank friendship. You. It's, it's, it's a mutual admiration society then because I, I will say all the same things about him. It's ter He's a terrific actor to work um, with. This character Mitch, born and raised in L.A., just born like you. Born and raised you. in L.A. Well, I think there's probably going to be a lot of me in the character in the sense that uh, I think Mitch is kind of a middle-aged adolescent, which I fear I am. You are? And I think so. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. You don't sound like you well, behave gonna, like an adolescent. Well, I, you know, I, I, when I grow up, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with my life. But until then, I, I'm really enjoying what I have been doing. The press material says that you and, um, and James and your characters find out a lot of things about humanity that you didn't know before. What does all that mean? Well, I think that uh, we come from such diverse backgrounds in, in, in the fact that uh, as, a, as a California kid, born and raised in a very laid back atmosphere and a kind of an outdoors and, and uh, not permissive, but, but certainly a much more liberal uh, lifestyle uh, than that of Gabriel, uh, the character that's played by James. And of course, his incarceration for 20 years, and his his now newfound freedom, and and uh, you know, we'll teach each other a little bit about life, yeah. about what it's all about, and, and how you get on in this world. How are you, as such a fine director, able to step back and take the actor's seat and not get involved in the directing? Well, I love to be directed, first of all. Do I you? really do. I really I, I enjoy the whole process of, of of our of our business. I enjoy the discipline of acting more than more than anything I think that's that's the thing that that really turns me on and so I enjoy uh, trying to work within the structure and the framework of a character and the story and the dialogue uh, I, I, I I am capable of improvisation but I'm but I'm not a fan of improvisation in the sense that I feel that a writer who spent a lot of time uh, um, sitting over a typewriter staring at blank paper and putting down hopefully wonderful words then I think it's my responsibility as, as an actor to, uh, to then translate those words into action. And uh, so I, I love that process. And, mm -hmm. and when a director comes in, it's very easy for me to turn it off. I rarely second guess a director. Because it, you, can, you can. You can second direct, guess a director on every single shot in a film because we have different opinions sure. about, about even photographically where we would set up this interview. I mean, you would pick one place, I would pick another. The director of this, of this segment has picked another. Uh, so if you sit there and question all of those things, you never get your day's work done. You know. I'm wondering if that kind of sense of cooperation um, and freedom for others plays off into your marriage. This tremendous longevity you've had with Penny. Well, yes, yeah, well, going on 35 years now, and I think that's. But I think that's tribute to her. Really? <laughs> yes, really, I do. Why? Well, I, I just think that it, I, I think that uh, in, in marriages, I think uh, especially in marriages in show business, where one where one is in in the business and one is not, as she is not. I think it requires a great deal of understanding and a great deal of adjustment and compromise on the part of the other, of the other partner. You know, I think that uh, because we, uh, it, it, just by the very nature of what we do, we're pampered, we're, uh, uh, you know, are, are in, we're indulged, and you have to come home to a wife who's understanding that, that you've been really a big shot all day, and now she has to deal with that. You but know. for a long time, you made a decision, I read, to take the children with you. Yeah, we did. Well, that was one of the things. You know, it just dawned on me after all these years, after years and years and years, and three now adult children and one married, or a, that uh, it suddenly dawned on me that Penny must have been very lonesome at certain times in our, in our marriage when she was on location, even though she had the children, you know. 
And, um, well, she certainly uh, had a lot to carry, raising three oh, kids and, and schlepping And bring them, them along. And I never once heard her say, I'm bored. I've never once heard her say, you know, damn the kids, they're not ready. Uh, I never heard her complain. And suddenly it dawned on me after about 30 years of marriage. I said, you, you know guys, something? it takes you time to figure this out. I said, I'm a, little, I'm a little slow, Penny, but I have to really, I, I really have to, I, I really, I always appreciated what you did, but I really started to realize how difficult it was, you hmm. know. And, uh, but she made my life very simple. And Good it, it was, I think part of it that. was, part of it was the fact that, uh, that I took my kids with me. And, and, uh, you know, I don't think they suffered much by it. Uh, they've turned out to be nice human beings, and I think that's more important. There are no Rhodes Scholars in our family, but they all are good people. Isn't that nice? You know, you started back in radio in the city. Yeah. And, and you've, you've been here for so long, but you made the funniest comment years ago. You said, my career is like ragweed pollen. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> yes, saying that? Yes, that's true, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's kind of like ragweed pollen. I'm always around, you know, and sometimes I'm a little... I, 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 I'm, I influence you a little more than I might others, you know, so we hope that this is a ragweed pollen year. <laughs> and looking back, it sounds like you're a man with no regrets. You wouldn't have done it any differently than you've done it? I don't think so. No? No, I look back and I think, no, if these decisions that you make, I, I think that uh, I regret, I don't regret any decisions that I made that were negative in the sense that the things that I did not do and look back and say, gee, I wish I'd done that. First of all, that I think that's a, that's a, kind of a fallacious assumption anyway to, to, to believe that you're going to be maybe as good as the guy who did the role mm -hmm. that you didn't do, you know, because maybe the reason it worked with that other actor is because he was really better doing that character than you might have been. So I, I don't look back with any regret on that at all. Well, we wish you the best of luck with pros and cons. It sounds like you're not only going to have a good time, but it sounds like you'll have a good series. We will have a good time, and hopefully we'll have a good series. Well, that's great, Richard. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you.